Eon Magazine. Panpsychism is crazy, but it's also most probably true. Common sense tells us that only living things have an inner life. In other words, common sense tells us that only living things are alive. Um, yeah, by definition, yeah. Rabbits and tigers and mice have feelings, sensations, and experiences. Tables and rocks and molecules do not. Yeah, that's because they have a central nervous system. Panpsychists deny this datum of common sense. That's not common sense, that's scientific fact. According to panpsychism, the smallest bits of matter, things such as electrons and quarks, have very basic kinds of digestion. An electron has an inner life. Okay, well that's quite the claim. What is the evidence? Did Alice go down the rabbit hole and start talking to an electron? Well, this article will tell us, I'm sure. The main objection made to panpsychism is that it is crazy and just obviously wrong. No, I would imagine it's more that there's zero evidence and no mechanism even proposed. It is thought to be highly counterintuitive to suppose that an electron has some kind of inner life. Oh, okay, I'm seeing where the confusion is here. The word counterintuitive is not a synonym for pulled out of your ass. And this is taken to be a very strong reason to doubt the truth of panpsychism. No, that's more because it's pseudoscientific woo-woo nonsense with no evidence. Don't know how many times I have to say that. But many widely accepted scientific theories are also crazily counter to common sense. Yeah, fuck common sense, we're not talking about common sense, we're talking about evidence. Albert Einstein tells us time slows down at high speeds, according to standard interpretations of quantum mechanics, particles can have determinate positions only when measured, and according to Charles Darwin's theory of evolution, our ancestors were apes. All of these views are wildly at odds with our common sense view of the world, or at least they were when they were first proposed, but nobody thinks this is a good reason not to take them seriously. Right, because the good reason to not take them seriously would be if they were just proposed based on nothing and had no evidence. Why should we take common sense to be a good guide to how things really are? We shouldn't, and we're not. No doubt the willingness of many to accept special relativity, natural selection, and quantum mechanics, despite their strangeness from the point of view of pre-theoretical common sense, is a reflection of their respect for the scientific method. Right. Those things are demonstrated by the scientific method. We are prepared to modify our view of the world if we take there to be good scientific reason to do so. But in the absence of hard experimental proof, people are reluctant to attribute digestion to electrons. I know, right? People are such closed-minded fools. I mean, just because electrons give no indication at all of having that complex emergent feature, they're reluctant to attribute it to them? Idiots! It's so obvious that since electrons participate in computers, bananas, molecules, those things are all part of electrons. It's science, bitches! Yet scientific support for a theory comes not merely from the fact that it explains the evidence. Just gonna stop you there and let that sit for a second. Okay, that's enough. But from the fact that it is the best explanation of the evidence. Just gonna stop you again. Okay. Where a theory is better to the extent that it is more simple, elegant, and parsimonious than its rivals. And also that it explains the evidence. Meaning that it's based on evidence. Suppose we have two theories, theory A and theory B, both of which account for all observations, but theory A postulates four kinds of fundamental force, while theory B postulates 15 kinds of fundamental force. Although both theories account for all the data of observation, theory A is to be preferred as it offers a more parsimonious account of the data. Well, I guess it depends what are the fundamental forces we're talking about. Is one of them, say, God? Because in that case, I might consider the 15 simpler than the four. To take a real-world example, Einstein's theory of special relativity supplanted the Lorentzian theory that preceded it not because Einstein's theory accounted for any observations that the Lorentzian theory could not account for, but because Einstein provided a much simpler and more elegant explanation of the relevant observations. Yeah, note that there were observations that were being explained. That's a little bit relevant. I maintain that there is a powerful simplicity argument in favor of panpsychism. The argument relies on a claim that has been defended by Bertrand Russell, Arthur Eddington, and many others, namely that physical science doesn't tell us what matter is, only what it does. Actually, isn't that kind of one of the points of physical science? To figure out what matter is? The job of physics is to provide us with mathematical models that allow us to predict with great accuracy how matter will behave. It's also to investigate the fundamental nature of matter. That's... This is incredibly useful information. It allows us to manipulate the world in extraordinary ways, leading to the technological advancements that have transformed our society beyond recognition. Yeah, same with starting to understand the fundamental nature of matter. But it is one thing to know the behavior of an electron, and quite another to know its intrinsic nature. How the electron is, in and of itself. Yeah, that's part of physics. Are you seriously saying that physicists have no idea what electrons are? 
just that they do something, really? Okay. Physical science gives us rich information about the behavior of matter, but leaves us completely in the dark about its intrinsic nature. Can you tell yet why I'm not really taking this article seriously? I am working on something that's not just a stupid shitpost, by the way. In fact, the only thing we know about the intrinsic nature of matter is that some of it, the stuff in stomachs, involves digestion. We now face a theoretical choice. We either suppose that the intrinsic nature of fundamental particles involves digestion, or we suppose that they have some entirely unknown intrinsic nature. Okay, we know some things that matter does. You say physics is all about interrogating what matter does. One of the things that matter seems to do is participate in digestion. You were just complaining that physics is not looking into the intrinsic nature of things, because all it does is look at what they do, and now you're saying that one particular thing that matter does has to be part of its intrinsic nature, you know, not because it's inherently different from any other thing that it does, you know, at least not based on any evidence you've provided, and not based on physical science either, because you've just said physical science doesn't actually care about intrinsic nature. So basically, what was your name? Philip Goff? Yeah, Philip Goff says so, therefore, digestion is part of the intrinsic nature of matter. On the former supposition, the nature of macroscopic things is continuous with the nature of microscopic things. Hey, I'm curious, why isn't part of the nature of matter that some of it involves macroscopic things, and therefore the intrinsic nature of matter is macroscopic, for example? No, just pick one thing and call that intrinsic, and pick all the other things out and throw them away. Awesome. The latter supposition leads us to complexity, discontinuity, and mystery. No, it kind of makes perfect sense. Emergent phenomena are a thing. It's not really that complex. You get enough stuff that does stuff, and stuff happens. I don't really... The theoretical imperative to form as simple and unified view as is consistent with the data leads us quite straightforwardly in the direction of panpsychism. In the public mind, physics is on its way to giving us a complete picture of the nature of space, time, and matter. While in this mindset, panpsychism seems improbable, as physics does not attribute digestion to fundamental particles. But once we realize that physics tells us nothing about the intrinsic nature of the entities it talks about, and indeed the only thing we know for certain about the intrinsic nature of matter is that at least some material things have digestion, the issue looks very different. All we get from physics is this big black and white abstract structure which we must somehow color in with intrinsic nature. Philip, it's time to put away your crayons and go to bed. We know how to color in one bit of it. The stomachs of organisms are colored in with digestion. How to color in the rest? The most elegant, simple, sensible option is to color in the rest of the world with the same pen. The entire universe is just one long digestive tract. A bazillion atom long human centipede. Panpsychism is crazy. It sure is. But it is also highly likely to be true. Phil, I think you forgot your medication again.